G'day everybody, hope everyone's well. It's been a hot minute since I've last uploaded. I'm not dead, I'm still here. Things have just been on the go, I've had a holiday and just a lot of stuff. Haven't had time to make videos. But I'm finally back at it and we're going to try and get some more made. So yeah, apologies for that and you'll start seeing a bit more of me hopefully. So in this video we're going to be fitting an electronic lift pump to the RD28 Patrol in hopes that it fixes issues with the car. As usual, with this mod and most mods that you're going to do on a car, some people will recommend it and others will recommend against it. So as I've done in many of my other videos, I'll try and cover the entire scope of this project, what it does, its benefits, its potential drawbacks and anything related to it so that you can form your own decision as to if you want to fit one or not. Lift pumps on a diesel engine achieve the same goal that a fuel pump on a petrol engine does. What it does is it will lift the fuel out of the tank, charge it to a certain pressure, and that will then be received by the diesel pump itself, compared to a petrol engine that's got a fuel rail that receives the pressure and the fuel squirts into the cylinders via their fuel injectors. A diesel engine equipped with a VE pump is different to a common rail diesel engine, whereas the lift pump only has to supply a little bit of fuel pressure in order to do its job efficiently. Common rail diesel engines have to supply quite a bit more pressure as their injection event it requires much higher pressure up to 30,000 psi compared to a lower pressure VE pump operating around 2,000 psi. For anyone that's clued up on the Bosch VE injector pump they will know that the pump itself has an integral lift pump in it, a vein pump which does both the job of drawing fuel from the fuel tank and pressurizing it to the pump's initial pressure before it is then pressurized by the hydro head to injection pressure. Many people will tell you that a lift pump is going to damage the pump as it is going to pressurize too much and it's going to blow the seals out which is going to cause more problems than it's going to fix. I'm here to tell you now that that is not the case though if you look at the design of a Bosch VE pump and you look at any documentation about VE pumps operation you will realize that lift pumps are often used in OEM applications when the pump is fitted. So on the screen right now I'm going to show you some excerpts out of the Bosch VE pump technical instruction manual. This manual is supplied by Bosch and details the pump's design, its operation and many other factors of its design which is a very interesting read. I highly recommend you have a look at it. It's free online if you look in the right place. So if we look at page 13 under fuel line configuration I'm going to read you the following. For the injection pump to function efficiently it is necessary that the high pressure stage is continually provided with pressurized fuel which is free of any bubbles. Normally in the case of passenger cars and light commercial vehicles the difference in height between the fuel tank and the fuel injector equipment is negligible. Furthermore the fuel lines are not too long and they have adequate internal diameters. As a result the vein supply pump in the injection pump is powerful enough to draw the fuel out of the fuel tank and build up sufficient pressure in the interior of the injection pump. In those cases in which the difference in height between the fuel tank and the injection pump is excessive and all the fuel lines between the tank and the pump are too long, a pre-supply pump must be installed. This overcomes the resistance in the fuel line and the fuel filter. Gravity feed tanks are mainly used on stationary engines. So you can see this OEM document by the manufacturer of the injection pump recommends the installation of a lift pump should there be requirement for it. We can determine from this that the lift pump of the right size and the right type will not damage the pump and the pump will operate normally in tandem with this installed. What the information from the manual is saying is that the pump is going to have trouble to draw and pressurize fuel from the tank if the fuel lines are too long or too small. An example of this would be when you're drinking through a straw. You've got to suck quite hard to get the liquid from the cup into your mouth. If you use two or three straws, you're going to have much more liquid come to your mouth with less suction created. The effect that the lift pump is going to have will be if you were squeezing a bottle with the straw in it, it's going to push the liquid through the straw into your mouth without having to create suction force. This in turn in the diesel system is going to mean the pump isn't having to draw fuel, it's only going to have to pressurize it, meaning there is less effective pressure loss and the pump is going to operate much more efficiently and the fuel is going to be flowing much easier. 
The reason some people think that lift pumps can be detrimental to the diesel pump operation is because the diesel pump utilizes its own system pressure that it builds in order to advance the timing of the engine as the RPMs increase. This is done by an internal plunger charged by a spring. As the system pressure increases due to the RPM of the vein pump increasing, the spring on the advanced plunger is going to be overcome by the area of force of pressure in the fuel that is going to be moving the advanced plunger across, which is going to advance the timing of the pump so that the combustion event is going to be in line with the engine's operation speed due to the time taken for the fuel burn to take place. Just after the initial pressurization stage of the vane pump, there is a relief slash control valve built into the system. This maintains the pressure inside the pump after the vane pump so that the advanced plunger is not affected by the lift pump. All the extra fuel and extra flow that is seen when fitting a lift pump is going to be bypassed with the relief slash control valve which is then going to be returned to tank. This increased flow of fuel through the pump is going to be good because this is going to itself lubricate the pump it's going to be nice cool diesel fuel which is going to constantly be circulated and is going to keep everything running nice and good. So if that makes sense for everyone we're now going to talk about the lift pump selection and the best one that you can choose to fit your application. There are a couple of different types of lift pumps that you can select. The main ones would either be a reciprocating or a rotary style lift pump. Reciprocating pumps either utilize a little piston or a diaphragm inside them they will reciprocate, meaning there is a compression stroke and then a suction stroke with a check valve built in between. Rotary pumps on the other hand will supply a constant flow and a constant pressure without a drop of pressure between compression and suction strokes. The highest flow output that you're going to get will be from a rotary style pump. If I was going to recommend a pump, I would recommend something like a Carter 4600. This rotary pump has a very high flow rate and a very low pressure rating. The input shaft of the injector pump is going to see a slight increase in pressure, a very slight increase when you fit a lift pump, so therefore you want a very low pressure output pump as a lift pump, ideally under 7 or 8 psi. So you can see I've drawn up a PNID schematic for a diesel pump injection system. So where we want to install the lift pump ideally is as close to the fuel tank as possible. The reasoning for this is that there is both a mixture of rubber and metal fuel lines leading up to the diesel pump at the front of the car. What we want to do is we want to charge this entire system from here forward with pressurized fuel from a lift pump. So this means that there is effectively a head of pressure behind the lift pump towards the diesel pump. This would mean that the effect of a reciprocating pump such that I've fitted is going to be lessened. For a real world example of this, if we take a look at this garden hose that I've got, if we charge the whole system to the water pressure that we have coming to the house, we will then turn the hose tap off. This will lock our house's water inlet pressure inside the hose. Then if I discharge the end of the hose, you will see that all of the pressure that is accumulated in the rubber hose due to the elasticity will be discharged and it's going to take a little bit. There's a fair amount of built up pressure. If we then do the same with a shorter section of hose simulating a lift pump that's fitted closer to the engine, you'll see that there is much less stored pressure when the pressure is discharged meaning that if you fit a reciprocating pump close to the diesel pump itself, your inlet line will instead see consistent pressure spikes as the pump reciprocates because there is no built up pressure due to rubber lines. If you're concerned about this and you do choose a rotary style, this could in theory be fit close to the engine bay as it would negate this potential fault of a reciprocating pump. General rule of thumb though for any lift pump is that you want it as close to the tank as possible so the lift pump's inlet line doesn't have to draw through a long straw suction as I mentioned that the diesel pump has to do. So now that we've got all this out of the way, we're going to show you how I've fitted my lift pump to my system. So I ended up choosing a facet solid state fuel cube. This reciprocating pump has a built in check valve so that any pressure that is built into the diesel pump lines does not backflow into the tank and is not wasted. The benefit of this pump design is that if your electronic system fails and the lift pump does not come on, the internal check valve will allow your engine to still run purely by the Bosch pump drawing the fuel from the low pressure state as it would be operating normally without a lift pump. All this being said, if you have a freshly built Bosch pump and that has a new fresh vein pump with new seals in it, it should have enough force that it is able to draw pressure fine through the fuel lines and this is going to be adequate for the pump to operate even if it has a bigger plunger fitted and is tuned up for more fuel. 
Unfortunately, with the GU chassis that I have, I do not have a body lift, so there is nearly no access to install a lift pump near to the fuel tank. So I chose to do the rough caveman approach and just cut a hole in the back of the car as an access panel um, so that I could fit the fuel pump just under where the fuel tank is. If you have a cab chassis or a ute style, you're not going to have to go to this extent as you'll have much easier access to the fuel tank. A lot of people are going to be thinking, what the heck is this guy doing cutting a hole in the floor of his car? And that's fair enough. If you care a lot about your cab, then I wouldn't suggest doing it this way, but this is the easiest way I could find to get access to install the lift pump. And I don't really care about my car, so yeah, that's what I did. People have also installed lift pumps along the chassis rail where the fuel line runs. There shouldn't be any issue with this, I just took the instructions very much to heart in saying that it should be as close to the fuel tank as possible. This is just the way I did it. I decided the easiest way to mount the pump would be to hang it down with a bracket that was bolted to the body itself. I used a piece of flat bar which I'd rounded and then drilled a bunch of holes in so the pump would be bolted to it and then it would be bolted to the body of the car. I used nut certs on the piece of flat bar that would allow me to put a bolt through from the top of the body, screw it into the nut cert in the flat bar itself and that would secure everything nicely. Nut certs are pretty nifty, I do recommend getting yourself a nut cert tool, they are absolutely awesome. With the pump mount sorted, we can put the fittings into the pump now. The fittings use 1 8 NPT tapered fittings, which need thread tape or thread sealant so they won't leak. If you use thread tape, two rolls is plenty and make sure it wraps around to the left so that it won't unravel off the fitting thread when you screw it into the block. One of the fittings has a check valve built into it, so just make sure you have oriented it right as per the pump's data sheet. Once this is done and the pump is ready to install, I'd highly suggest changing the fuel supply rubber line. I'd assume that the fuel line that is on my car was factory and there was no telling how perished the rubber was, so it's always good to change to a new line. You don't need high pressure fuel line for this, it's low operating pressure, just make sure you check what the working pressure on the hose is before you install it. With the pump installed, we can now run the wiring for it. For my install, I decided to use a nut cert to swage the ring connector for the earth to the metal body of the car. And then I'd run the 12 volt feed wire through the bore of the nut cert so that it would be inside the cab and not hanging down under the car to get yanked off while you're off-roading. For the 12 volt supply, I pulled the power from the gauge lights, which I'd taken from the cigarette lighter. Use a big wire so there won't be too much resistance over the metre or two of length from the front of the car to the back. Once everything is installed, you can hit the ignition and prime the system to check for leaks. You will hear now how loud the pump is. I'd suggest using rubber between the pump bracket and the body of the car as this may lower the noise produced by the oscillations of the reciprocating pump. Once you're happy with everything, that's job done. You can cover up the hole you cut with some tin pop riveted in, or you can work something else out. That's all from me anyway. 
There's been some big changes to my build future with the patrol. I'm going to make a video explaining this soon as a couple of people on my Instagram were confused. For now though, I hope everyone enjoyed the video and you've learned a thing or two. As always, if anyone has questions, drop a comment or message me directly on Instagram. I'm more than happy to help out. So that's it. As always, I hope everyone's well, stay safe and don't drink diesel.